The following program does not have a normal intro because I was really too busy smoothing other things over to get it done. So, Corey? Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the following program. I am your host, Joan Yearman, a.k.a. Good Logic. I got to share this with you. I got to share this with you. So much about this. I, I was like, when I saw this, I was like, oh, all right, this is definitely, this is definitely something I want to share. When I stumbled on this, I did not realize I was going to, that I would, that I would have a response, which would basically feed me the topic of tonight's show. But this is a report from CNN, CNN report, CNN report, because you know that Whenever CNN's reporting something, very reliable, very reliable. Let's see what they're saying here about people who are applying to work for the RNC during this 2024 election cycle. Right. Well, you're exactly right, John. Uh, over the past few weeks, Trump advisors have been asking current and potential employees at the RNC what their views are of fraud surrounding the 2020 election and essentially was the election stolen. And uh, that's according to sources familiar with the interview questions. And they told me that uh, they viewed it as an apparent litmus test for potentially being hired. And some of these people also described it as unusual for a job interview question. And of course, it seemed a litmus test. Do you think the election was stolen? That's, an, that's a question that's being asked to potential hirees, potential people who are going to potentially work for the RNC. Was it stolen? Seems to the impression they had is that it seems to be are they questioning their loyalty to Donald Trump? Now, yeah, I don't care what, the, what their impression is as far as why they're being asked the question. It's an interesting question. You're, you're now applying to work for the RNC. Do you think the 2020 election was stolen? And they looked at it as a litmus test. Uh, this new hiring question Trump. comes uh, shortly after the Trump campaign and the RNC effectively merged their operations. According to my conversations with Trump campaign advisors as well as RNC officials, they essentially argue that they are now operating as one and the same. And I do want to just read for you what uh, a RNC spokeswoman, but and also a uh, Trump spokeswoman, she operates as well on both sides of this, told us regarding this reporting. She said, quote, candidates who worked on the front line in battleground states or are currently in states where fraud allegations have been prevalent were asked about their work experience. We want experienced staff with meaningful views on how elections are won and lost and real experience based opinions about what happens in the trenches. And that is from Danielle Alvarez, again, a RNC spokesperson, as well as a Trump spokesperson. And I do just want to take a step back here and give you some context around this, John. Give us the context. Give John and us the context. This comes as the RNC, one of their key focuses ahead of the 2024 election is going to be on what they call election integrity and really. What they call what what why would anyone not call elections? Do you not want election? Are you an election integrity denier? focusing on potential claims of fraud in the upcoming election. Now, we know that Donald Trump, one of his key issues with the RNC over the past few years is that he did not like the way that they handled his false claims of fraud surrounding the 2020 election. And yeah, yeah. So they're calling it a loyalty test. Are you loyal? Are you loyal to our boy Donald Trump? I didn't look at it that way. I didn't look at it that way. Sorry, I didn't mean to share that with you. Um, someone who said, if this is not the reason for current and potential employees to quit, then I don't know anymore. And I said, you likely never did. But they're all shocked. 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 Shocked, I say. Well, anyhow, to me, my for my money, asking a potential employee, the RNC, whether you believe the 2020 election is stolen.
stolen or not. There's really not a question of are you loyal to Trump? Because when you say loyalty to Trump, that implies that you're going to that's uh, I mean, it's not surprising that leftists would take that take because they'd be like that you're willing to lie for Trump and claim that it was stolen. No, I look at it as competency. If you're competent, if you're someone who's been swallowing the narrative from the left or the uniparty, it's really not even the left, to be fair with you. Mitch McConnell went along with this charade as well. Lindsey Graham went along with it. A whole bunch of folks went along with this charade for years. So it, it's only recently that I can actually say the phrase election fraud without worrying about getting some sort of smackdown from YouTube. So <clears throat> I'm sure this 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 stream went yellow before before I went live. Even I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure this is not suitable for most advertisers. Most advertisers deem this not suitable, not suitable conversation, very not suitable. Yeah, I could I could sit here cursing up a storm like a lunatic. And every other word could be like f bomb and 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 worse, and praising the our our twenty twenty election integrity, and that would be something that's suitable for everyone, everyone. That would be something. Hey, kitties, come on down here, <laughs> swallow what you're giving you. For me, I don't drop I don't drop language like that. So I consider this a family show. Also, because I don't tend to use language like that. But yeah, and. And I just say I have I raise questions. I raise questions, and that that makes me a threat. So I'm a threat. It's pretty much like I have a tattoo, and it's like YouTube is worried I'm going to steal their girlfriend or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I ran over their dog. I don't know. I don't know. But that being said, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going forward. And we're going to be breaking down this film. And I haven't watched it. There's, there's two parts. I watched the first part. I didn't watch the second part. And I want your feedback, your thoughts as to their perspectives as to how the 2020 election was defrauded. Now, me personally, I think that it's crazy to think that it was legitimate. That doesn't mean that their analysis or that their recommendations for how it should be remedied are necessarily something everyone agrees with. So that's basically what I plan on, on going through. So anyhow, just want to start with that. Also want to start with this. God bless you, Bella Stilla. You awesome. Gifting 20, 20, count them, 20 memberships. 20 memberships. So help me if, if Linda won another one. 20. If Linda won another one, so help me. Am I going to be able to see who got him? Uh, well, you rock. I can't see who got him. But hey, if you are someone who is recently bestowed with the title of follower, please understand this. It's easy to make a mistake. And you think, oh, now that I'm a follower of, in, of the following program, and I've joined the following, that would make Joe my leader. That's not the case at all. I am not the leader of... The following. I'm a follower, just like you. I am not the leader. I'm not. Not the leader. Very much not the leader. Not the leader. Not. Very much not not the leader at all. Very much not. The following is not at all a cult type of cult. So any of these people who are claiming otherwise, you can tell them, no, no. I know a guy who's been here since like a day it opened. And he says it's not at all a cult type of cult. If I, I can gift more if I get access to my phone. Bell and I have to go to the computer to gift. I don't know what to tell you. I don't I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix it. You remember for eight months. I don't know how to fix it. <sighs> Let me see. I, I have no idea. I don't know where to look. I don't know where to look. It's under monetization. It's under settings. Settings of channel, advanced settings. Do I want to set my channel as made for kids? Definitely not. Not for kids. I don't know. Creator agreements, upload defaults, general. 
No, it's definitely not there. It's on the settings. Is it under earn? Memberships. Do I have here? Giving. Nope, that's where I basically would give charity. I don't tell you. I don't tell you. I'm not spending much longer on it right now during the show because I don't think it's fair to people. I appreciate I appreciate the efforts. I appreciate the efforts, genuinely. I really do. But I don't know how to I don't know how to fix that. Under earn, watch page ads, memberships, customize your default perks. Best practices, one complete ad and intro video. No, what? You're trying to tell me how to make money. You're trying you tell you're trying to tell me how to make money. You're trying to tell me. Please. Considering you guys are, are working the algorithm against me, I think I, I do do a pretty decent job. Look at this. I've lost 387 members. What the hell? When did that happen? Hmm. So sad. I don't know. I don't know. I can't figure it out. I'm sure there's a way. To partner, chat, email, giving external links and cards and end screens, resources, getting paid. I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. I don't see it. This is killing me. You're making me aggravated. I know you're not trying to. I know you're trying to help. I'm still feeling aggravated. All right. Well, anyhow, I am losing members every day because they take people away from me. Because they take them away from me. So I'm losing people every day. So I just will ask you, that if you're here, if you could just listen to the cartoon. Cartoon knows what he's talking about. And he, oh, go, jump, subscribe. So if you could like, share, subscribe, I'd be most most obliged. Most obliged. When do I get my members on the jacket for the, there's no the new new member of the following. Okay, so I need to explain something to you. Okay. Okay. When you join the following. A lot of people are going to try telling you, oh, welcome to the cult. It's like this It's like this running gag. It's not at all a cult type of cult. There's no spaceships, no Kool-Aid, no tracksuits that are mandatory. Mild farming, no goat sacrifices, no squirrel mutilations, no throwing virgins into volcanoes. At least it's not mandatory. Very frowned upon. Very, very frowned upon. Um, very, very frowned upon. I'm even. I'm going to call it a no. I'm going to call it a no. No stabbing. No harming others. No self harm. No stabbing yourself with the jabby jab. No self hypnosis. No dancing around bonfires while shedding clothing. It's really not at all a cult type of cult. So, don't don't listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. So, what do we sacrifice? We don't have squirrels. Where we there's no sacrifices no mutilations it would be goats who would be sacrificed and they're not and it would be squirrels who would be mutilated and they ain't they ain't i knew that guy who said it wasn't called to shame i can gift from phone android oh there you go so some people can gift i guess if if android is taking 30 percent off the top then they'll let you gift i don't know your stream is the only one i can't access gifting from my phone no worries. I get it. Look at it later. All right. Let's get into this movie. We got to see a movie. It's movie night. Movie night. Movie night. We're going to watch a movie together. We're going to watch a movie together. Here we go. Oh, you don't want this. I don't even know how to get rid of this if I wanted to. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I know you don't hear nothing. I don't hear nothing either. I still hear nothing. All right, welcome back to the CNN special live coverage. Oh, okay. So maybe I got to play this at regular speed. Hopefully, we're not going to keep getting this circle of death.
Okay, this is annoying. I didn't have this problem before. I'm going to try to fix this. Give me a second here. Let's try to remedy. Uh... Coincidence twice, whatever. I don't even know. 180 times coordinated national election. All right, welcome back. This is CNN special live coverage, 1031 a.m. on the East Coast. Why am I giving you the time? Well, if you... 1031 a.m., day after the election. ...managed to sleep last night, things changed. You may have gone to bed thinking this election was headed one way, and then you woke up and you saw things were different and maybe trending, trending increasingly in another direction. Phil Mattingly at the Magic Wall, you've got a neat tool to show this. Yeah, look, so this is the map right now, right? We've been talking about this for the last several hours. It's shifted in the last several hours, but what was happening beforehand? You can talk to a lot of people who, if they were big Trump fans, big Trump supporters, went to bed probably pretty happy. Big Biden supporters, not super happy. So let's kind of track through this. I want to walk through how- Let's things... walk through what happened in the middle of the night. Let's let's try to let's try to piece this together. What happened in the middle of the night? Look at that. Look at that. Nevada's red. Wisconsin's red. Michigan is red. Pennsylvania's red. Georgia's red. It's all sea of red there. Things have changed. This is at 1 a.m. in the morning. Look at Nevada. Look at Wisconsin. Look at Michigan. Look at Pennsylvania. Well, just keep Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, we haven't we haven't fixed that one yet. It's going to take us more than a day to fix Pennsylvania. It's going to take us a while to, to just sit tight. You're going to love Pennsylvania, audience, CNN audience. You're going to love them. You're going to love them. Anywhere it is. Flip to two. All of a sudden, Nevada flips. Oh. All of a sudden, Wisconsin starts to flip. Wisconsin. Wisconsin, where they have voter rolls that they refuse to try even cleaning up. They consider it anti-democratic to clean up voter rolls. Sorry, this is 5 a.m. This is 5 a.m. One more. Michigan as well. So I'll take all these off and I want to watch it again because just the progression throughout the night it was crazy as we were live on crazy television talking about this as it happened, as things looked very, very good for the for the Trump campaign. And weirdly, Trump even predicted when he went to bed that night, he's like, we're going to see some funky things happening in the middle of the night. I don't know why they're closing. You might not remember that, but he actually came I made a national. He came, he addressed the nation and said, I don't know why things are closing down. The numbers look great. We won this election. We won this election. It was a great election. It was, it was perfect election. But now the numbers are slowing down. And I don't want to see at four in the morning, there's going to be these massive drums, drops of Biden votes. He called it before it happened. Particularly in the Midwest, Pennsylvania into the Midwest, Nevada as well. So we're waiting for a vote to come in. 1 a.m.? 2 a.m., 9.05 a.m., and you just watched it. And we talked about the progression over the last several hours, the progression in Wisconsin, the progression in Michigan, the progression that may be happening in Pennsylvania. There's a reason. Maybe happening. It's going to take us another day or two to get Pennsylvania taken care of. They weren't even thinking about Georgia at this point. They weren't even thinking. Georgia took them like six days, six days of them saying there's only 50,000 votes left. And and Biden needs forty eight thousand of them, but we we're going to count these fifty thousand before we call it. And then it should take us like another day to count these fifty thousand. It's like you counted three million votes in the middle of the night, and it's going to take you a day to count these fifty thousand votes. And then and then all of a sudden they come back like nine hours later, and they'd be like, "Well, we only we're down to one hundred twenty thousand votes left in Georgia." And now, <laughs> and now, Biden's made up. Uh, he, he he's he's made up twenty thousand votes so far. There's only hundred. It's like wait, you only had fifty thousand this morning, and every day there would just be more votes, more votes. I remember Georgia. I was like, they're just gonna keep saying more votes and more votes until until he finally passes them. For it, there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. The 2020 election was perhaps the most contentious election in American history. Those who went to bed on election night with President Donald Trump seemingly headed Look at to Georgia a... there. Look at Georgia. Look at Georgia. Crazy. 5543.
stupid Joe Jorgensen. 55-43. Sure Electoral College victory awoke to a nightmare. During the night, counties in numerous battleground states had stopped counting, and when they resumed, Democrat Joe Biden's numbers kept going up in all of them. Over the next several days, states kept counting absentee votes until finally, Joe Biden was declared the winner by the news media. Despite the best effort- In six out of six elections, and six out of six of them, I don't know, they just seem to have enough. Efforts of Donald Trump supporters to delay certification until the growing amount of evidence could be fully investigated, Congress made the election official on January 6, 2021. After over three years of research, this is the story of the major ways the election was stolen and how we can prevent this from ever happening again. These are the fingerprints of fraud. All right. There we go. Fingerprints of fraud. Uh, Yard Snitch says the leader is found here. Maybe. It's not me. I don't know. What about the red heifer, Joe? Can we sacrifice? No, there's no, definitely not. No, 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 definitely not. Need an audience poll. Should I take my kids to Blazing Saddles? It is showing on big screen Friday. My local theater would like to see on big screen. The age of your kids is kind of relevant. Are they eight? Are they 10? 12? Personally, I think that like some of the humor is a little bit adult. What was her name? Madeline Kahn. Some of it was a little uh, on the like I wouldn't show it to a six year old. Um, yeah, but uh, you sort of need to put out the age of your kids so that people can have an idea. Anyone lost their membership? They're orphan members. Aww. St. John, member for two months. Definitely not a cult. I checked Martin's book on cults and we're, see? Not at all. It, Time Magazine rated us as the least culty cult in the country. It's so, it's so not, we're not at all a cult. Let's have a cult. Teenager 15 to 16. Uh, here every night for years and unsubbed again. To, isn't this crazy? I mean, isn't this crazy? It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It really, it makes no sense. And people think I'm making this up. People think I'm making this up. I hear this all the time. The exact same story happened in 2016. Everyone went to bed thinking Hillary won, and we saw how they reacted. We didn't go to bed thinking that she won. No, no, I remember in 2016, where like at one or two in the morning, Trump was declared the winner. It did not happen like that in 2016. I remember laying on my couch and watching the results come in and being and getting very excited. Back then, I had much less love for Trump and much more loathing for Hillary. And watching her fail was was delicious. You remember 2016, like the the video of her in like some back room with 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 Bill when she got some positive report. She's just jumping up and down. <laughs> ah, such good times, such good times. Ah, so good. All right, let me make sure I'm not not missing any you folks over here in the uh, in the ghetto. You ghetto people are, are okay. All right, let's get on. Oh, sorry. My bad. Reb says in locals, hey, Joe, here are the, what? Here are the physics of the Baltimore Bridge incident. I'm not talking about that tonight. Proud number 1984 digger, watch out for Orwell. Hmm, let's see what you did there. That's Johnny Reb, 84. Anyway, I don't know what to I don't know what to make out of this. What should I make out of this? This is what he's giving me. What what, what am I supposed to make out of that? It's the bridge, the wind, the current. I don't know what to make out of any of this. How strong is the wind? How strong is the current? It's 
So the wind is pushing it from behind and the water is pushing it toward the, sorry, the, the water is pushing it forward and the wind is pushing it into the support beam. That's what I, that's what I get from that. All right. But anyway, let's, let's get back on topic here. Teenagers 15 and 16. Yeah. Just take them. <laughs> just take them. 15 and 16. Yeah, that'll be. It's good for them. Never been on sub from any channel ever. It's a conspiracy. You're right about 2016. Of course, I'm right about 2016. I remember it vividly, but I, I appreciate the support. Wait, my about. I feel so. I feel so bad. I feel so bad, Pam. I feel so bad. I told everyone it would be 30 days before I, I send it. You're not going to have at least 30 days, but it's been close to two months. I owe you a hat. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I feel so bad. I have to get, I have to get that done this weekend. I'm getting it done this weekend. I'm getting them done. Jeff O'Donnell is a computer software and systems expert with over 40 years of experience. Since mid 2021. He has been one of the lead researchers into the election of 2020 and subsequent elections as well. He's also got some badass dogs. Jeff began researching the 2020 election in earnest in August 2021 after watching Mike Lindell's cyber symposium. So like a lot of you watching this, uh, I woke up on the 4th of November uh, knowing something had gone hideously wrong. Didn't know how wrong yet, but... It certainly was uh, a, a disappointment, to say the least. Uh, and then over the next few days, weeks, news started to get out about strange stopping and counting that happened, uh, unexplained uh, rise in votes for, uh, for one candidate over the other. And, well, all I could do at the time was kind of keep track of what data uh, was coming out, which was, was just a little bit back then, uh, and, and try to follow uh, what was going on, hoping that things could be, uh, could be fixed before, uh, before the inauguration. Of course, that didn't happen. And uh, so if you fast forward to August, uh, I had just started a, uh, a company. I, I left my job uh, as CTO for a company I'd been with for quite some years. And uh, there was Mike Lindell's cyber symposium <laughs> uh, on my uh, computer screens, and, and I watched uh, almost all of it and saw that Tina Peters was talking about this server image uh, that, that she had saved from Mesa County, Colorado. And I remember hearing about that and thinking, wow, that's, that's going to be a really big deal. Uh, that's really going to help us. Well, the day or two after the symposium was over, I got a call from a friend who was working on election integrity in Pennsylvania. And he said, did you look at it yet? And I said, uh, look at what? And he said, the, the Mesa image. And uh, then he explained to me that the Mesa image had actually been made public, which I had not known at that point. Uh, initially, I pushed back. I said, I'm, I'm trying to get a company off the ground. I don't have time uh, to work on this. And anyway, it'll take me forever to get it set up. And anyway, by the time I get around looking at anything, and if I do find anything, there's going to be 100 other people like me who've already done it. You got to so, talk faster here. What's the point? Well, he'd worked with me for a long time, and he thought my skill set was was perfect for looking into it, so he kept haranguing me. And then the next thing you know, uh, my wife, Nancy, is also uh, trying to compel me to go ahead and, and look at this image. And I remember saying to her, if I do this and uh, find something, you know, we're in this uh, for the long run. And she said, yep, do it. And that's how I got, uh, uh, where I am today. Okay. 
That was. I'll tell you, I didn't really expect to that, find anything. That was that was like three minutes that we didn't need. When I was watching this. I was like, I don't know what he's talking about anymore. I don't even know what the Mesa image is. I don't know what the heck he's talking about. I recall saying at the time, uh, Dominion is not dumb enough uh, to leave evidence in a server in Mesa County, Colorado. Do you know what the Mesa image is? Am I the only one who doesn't know what the Mesa image is that he's talking about? That could be found. I was wrong. Okay. What Jeff found while examining the election databases would not only show proof of manipulation in Mesa County, it would provide a blueprint for discovery. Which they're covering up with him looking at it. Read it to us. I want batch and ballot. I gotta go. On the 21st of October 2018, new databases of the kind which contain the batch, ballot, tabulation, and adjudication information were created. So that's before the election. Mesa County clerks did not perform this action. Okay. What Jeff found while examining Mr. the election blank. databases would not only show proof of manipulation in Mesa County, it would provide a blueprint for discovering a national pattern of fraud. Why are they covering up the words? Before we get into that, we need to start at the beginning. And the, I don't know what's happening here. The difference in the adjudication numbers were supposed to be the same set of ballots, at least inclusion, that not all the ballots processed the second time were the same as those that have been processed the first time. It also makes it likely the votes for the ballots to have overwritten the votes originally recorded. They could have overwritten the votes. Okay. Beginning of what makes election fraud possible. Yeah. So everything we saw until now, just to be clear, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. When they got the voter rolls here. I'm like, okay, this, this, I, I got a feeling I know where they're going because I've been screaming about voter rolls for a long time. I, you've been screaming about voter rolls. I've been screaming about voter rolls for like I, long before you were. Okay, I've been screaming about voter rolls. Voter rolls are are a big deal, big big deal, big deal. In order for fraudulent votes to survive even minimal observation their ballots must be tied to a person in the voter rolls. When there is panic, this might not always happen, but it's the goal. That means that either falsified entries need to be inserted into the rolls or existing voter roll records need to be used. I think at this point, I've had the chance to examine more, uh, more than half of the voter rolls in the country. Okay. And I have yet to find one that I can look at and say, good job. Uh, they are all uniformly bad Terrible. and insecure. Terrible. Yep. And many appear to use old database technology still. And uh, the the danger of using these voter rolls uh, is pretty apparent to somebody who's worked with uh, big data sets uh, their whole life, like I have. It really starts with the voter rolls. And if those are not clean, then uh, it bubbles through the whole system, as you will see uh, in other parts of this, uh, of this movie. One issue I have with voter rolls in many, many states is that they handle their purging of records uh, by setting them to inactive, keeping them in the database, and just creating a new record. So in other words, they're still there. They're just in a different file. Okay. Uh, this is how in Wisconsin you end up with more than 7 million people in the voter rolls and uh, slightly less than half of them not actually being an active record. Uh, this allows for the surreptitious reactivation of voter roll records. And uh, is, it should not be acceptable. Uh, one problem with that is there's no transparency. Uh, if there was, we would be able to see when, uh, when these records are inactivated or reactivated, uh, and we can. So, so that is definitely problem number one. Meaning you can move them from what you can move batches, uh, hundreds of thousands 
from inactive to active and then have them vote. And then after the, the election is over, move those same back over into inactive. Wow. And I mean, that's just, <laughs> and no one would ever know what happened. Problem number two comes in with how the voter IDs are assigned. This was something that uh, became apparent as I was able to see more and more states and also had the privilege of being able to review Dr. Andrew Paquette's data from New York. Uh, Dr. Paquette did an extremely, extremely thorough deep dive into the New York state voter rules. And what he found was that the voter IDs uh, have been assigned using a algorithm, meaning uh, instead of just adding one to the last person, oftentimes there is a mathematical equation, actually several mathematical equations used to create the voter IDs in the counties in New York. The, uh, the problem with that is that it is impossible in a lot of cases to look at two records and see that uh, this person's voter registration was placed into the voter rolls before this person's, uh, which means that if, if you're obfuscating, that is the technical term for it, if you're obfuscating the, the voter IDs, then that opens up the possibility of backdating people into the roles, and it would never be obvious. And indeed, I've seen evidence that, that is done. Other people have seen evidence that, that has done. Our voter roles are the fuel source for the other types of fraud. This is that's the key sentence, by the way. We're, we're like eleven. We're halfway through here, and that's really the key sentence. Which a lot of people, I think, I think may not have known before watching this. So I mean, I'm trying to be fair as far as being critical of the work and stuff like that, and and at the same time, you know, <clears throat> giving him his his props for for whatever he he provides that's informative. And I think that that's a very important point, which a lot of people I think don't think about, which is that your voter rolls are that's that's the first source like if you don't have control over voter rolls it's much harder to actually commit fraud as he's about to explain and uh as i will get into later in this movie there has to be a change here if we are going to really have any sort of integrity uh in our elections moving forward and you can and you can forget about 2020 election if you're someone who actually cares about having a de democracy, the way the left is always screaming, it's about democracy, democracy. If you care about having a democracy, then you have to know that there's going to be integrity. And the only way you can have integrity is if you actually have accurate voter rolls. I've heard arguments from the left. They think that people try to like pare down the voter rolls for the purposes of keeping legitimate voters from voting. There's no evidence of that, though. There's no evidence of that. Quite the contrary. What we've seen is what, what we've seen is that there's been blatant abuses of hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, left on voter rolls who are, who are dead or who are or who have moved away or changed counties. And it's like it's like, why are you leaving that there? That there's no reason for that. And why are you advocating for that unless you're hoping to enable fraud? It's 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 so transparent. This is why when people on the left say, "Oh yeah, you know the Republicans steal elections too," they engage in voter fraud too. Okay, I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. Why are you enabling it? Why are you okay with enabling it? Why are you okay with the idea that that Republicans could be could potentially steal an election? Why why would why are you not worried about giving Republicans that capacity? We should all be on the same page on this, that election integrity, and not simply election integrity, but transparency of election integrity, that everyone can see that there was integrity, is the only way you can have a healthy, functioning, democratic republic. It's the only way. So, and, and step one is to make sure that the only people who have the ability to vote are under, under the local law, are given a ballot. I mean, it's it's this is 
this is not rocket science. It's, it's just, this is ABC's. Bella, you are awesome. Give me another one. Where is it? Oh, I see it here. Did I lose it? Did I lose it? Where are you? I want to see who you gifted. I don't know why it is that it throws me out of this. I got thrown out. Well, I agree with you, Angelo. Yeah. We need to nominate Bella Stella for non cult, non leader, leader status. <laughs> God bless you. I wish I could have called them out. Now I have it up again. I don't know why it is that I don't see my this video playing elsewhere. Maybe it is here. Maybe I do have it. No. I don't know what the hell is happening here. YouTube being stupid. All right. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome. Sherry Law is a shop for international whiskey. Is it really international whiskey day? Is it really? Is it a shop for that? International whiskey day? All hail international whiskeys. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Japanese whiskeys. Not really a fan of them. The, Scot the Scots are the only ones who know how to do it. It's International Whiskey Day. L'chaim. Salut. Bold speed. So good. All right. Where was I? Yeah. Let's get back to this. Where all this leads, of course, is getting falsified ballots, falsified votes uh, into the count. Yep. And I, I have personally found uh, a, a very scary number of instances where people are recorded as having voted twice in the same election. Uh, do I think these people actually voted twice? No, probably not. I believe that at least one of those votes was done through through the uh, through the machines uh, and and through falsified uh, mail-in ballots. But it's a huge problem uh, in the states I've looked at, and, and it ranges from dozens to hundreds to over six thousand in Wisconsin. If that doesn't uh, concern somebody. Uh, then I don't know what would. And here's the thing: when he talks about six thousand in Wisconsin, he talks about six thousand in Wisconsin. Those are the double votes. That is not accounting for the places where people never came in to vote, and they were just voted for once. Meaning, you have to assume that if there's six thousand double votes, that means that there had to have been. Many, many times that, the number of votes that came in there, because what are they doing? They're using algorithms to figure out statistically who's very unlikely to vote in this election. That's what they're trying to do. They're saying, oh, this is someone who hasn't voted in the last four elections. This is someone who hasn't voted in 20 years. So we're pretty confident that this person is not going to wake up and vote this year. But we know they might not be alive anymore. And even though they, they moved away a long time. And seeing as how they haven't voted in a whole bunch of elections, we can be pretty confident they're not going to show up this time and vote so we can vote for them. Now, every once in a while, if you use an algorithm like that to figure out whose name you should try using on a ballot, you're going to get it right much more often than you're not because people tend to be consistent in their behavior. Every once in a while, you're going to be wrong. Well, every once in a while was 6,000 of them. Which means that the times that we're not caught were almost certainly two, three, five. It could be as much as 10, 10 times that, 20 times that, 50 times that. Where they actually, the algorithm that they were using, the formulas that they were using to try and figure out who they, whose ballot they could use safely and got away with it. 
It makes the entire election process a joke. You have no idea who's actually voting for themselves when you don't have legitimate voting rolls and restricted access to those legitimate voting rolls. And, and I have to say, I, I have some methods for uh, for finding these duplicate voters. Uh, and I will be the first to admit that uh, it's very conservative. It's not going to find all of them. Uh, and, and there could be many more uh, because it simply can't check for all of the possibilities. They do things like uh, change names slightly, flip the first and last name, flip the first and middle name, uh, make small changes to the spelling uh, of, of the person's name. It is a definite problem, and it's one that needs to be solved. As an example of what Jeff is talking about, let's consider the case of Mary Johnson, a woman who has registered to vote and it in the active list. Mary gets married to a gentleman named Evans and must let the election board know. The election board inactivates her Mary Johnson voter record and creates a new one under the name Mary Evans. At election time, her old Mary Johnson record can be silently reactivated and used to vote however the perpetrator wants. After the election, the Mary Johnson record can be returned to inactive status. There is no existing safeguards against this type of election fraud, nor are there in processes for the elections office to detect it after it happens. Voters who move within their and how hard is it to actually detect this? Their county are also handled the same way. If you're going to have a fake, all you got to do is just basically see why is it that anyone is being moved from inactive to active. Now maybe they were put in inactive erroneously, but that should happen. You know, to under that should happen to a you know under a thousand people in the state of California. That should happen to much fewer than than one percent of one percent of people. It shouldn't be happening all the time. You shouldn't see that dozens, hundreds, or thousands of times. So that's why it should be like a red flag when you see someone move from inactive to act to active. Like what the heck is happening there? I guess theoretically, someone can move away to a different county and then come back to this county. That would would be a way that it could legitimately occur. But this should be like that. It shouldn't be happening. In November time, <laughs> and it shouldn't be happening by the thousands. How many people move away and come back? Ballot. You're going to need a person in the voter roll. And not just come back, but come back like an election cycle later. To assign that ballot to. And it goes a little something like this from what I have seen in my observations. First thing they the electoral college is dependent on you actually taking care to make sure that when you're counting the ballots, it's an accurate reflection of the 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 votes that are being cast by your citizenry, rather than a manipulated set of ballots that have little reflection on what your citizens actually cast their ballots for. Go for as any voter that was created completely fictitiously. They have been entered into the role. So we have third party companies like Eric who have access or at least influence into who gets added to our uh, voter rolls. Uh, I think that is a, a, a stone cold fact. So the ability is there to get people who aren't real people or people who are real but are very unlikely to register. In Arkansas, for instance, uh, before the last election, they had a tremendous number of people over 90 suddenly decide to register to vote. That is not normal. That doesn't usually happen. And even though Arkansas and that is a could deep, very well be an example. Even though Arkansas I, is a deep red state, I'd want them to look into that. I don't I'm not looking for like my guy to win. I just want to have confidence in our election process. They should look into Arkansas. What the hell's happening? A whole bunch of 90-year-olds are voting. That's crazy. Are like, oh, I got to register now. That's kind of weird. I'm talking about. So you use that pool of people who are uh, either fake or, or aren't, aren't really registered. They don't know their... Yeah, I remember this happening in Arizona a lot in particular. I'll tell you this. I don't remember if I did it in 2022. I think it was 2022. I voted by mail and then went in to try voting to see if I can get away with it. 
And they're like, no, sorry, you voted already. So, I, so, yeah. In my local precinct, they were they they were on top of it. That's why super delegates were invented for when voters have, have lost their damaged minds. I don't agree with the use of either, by the way. Of course you don't, because you're They're registered. You're sane. Because those are the safest ones to use to assign fake votes to. When they run out of those, uh, the next thing to go to are the inactive voters, uh, the, the records of those. Switch them to active, and then they can vote and be switched back to inactive. So that's your second pool. Then if they run out of those... Then they have to start using uh, low probability voters. And it should be very easy to, to create a program which tracks when people are moved to inactive, when they're tra moved from inactive to active, that anything who's moving back and forth is it's tracked so that they, they sort of almost become flagged as f for them to be sort of verified if you actually gave a damn about maintaining transparency and election integrity. Uh, these are people that uh, are, are calculated to be very unlikely to vote in the election. If somebody hasn't voted, voted in an election in a long time, which is another problem with the voter rolls, by the way, in that uh, we're not enforcing the uh, age out of them. In other words, if you haven't voted in so many elections, you get uh, purged. That in a lot of cases isn't happening. And even if it is happening, as I said before, they're keeping the inactive records in there, so they are still useful. But nevertheless, uh, they can figure out based on age, demographics, a lot of things, who is unlikely to vote or likely to vote in any given election. So they will use that pool. Then they run into a danger area, though, because if they guess wrong and they use uh, an existing person to cast a early or absentee vote. Uh, if that person then wanders into the election office on election day and tries to vote, they're going to hear, uh, well, I'm sorry, sir, you've already voted. If that sounds familiar. It's because it happens all the time. You hear the stories, they never go anywhere, but people show up and they're told they already voted. I believe that most of those are voters who the algorithm, the uh, the people who decide they did not expect them to vote, and they did. Okay. They did not expect them to vote, and they did. Now, if they run out of uh, voters from the voter rolls that they can use for fake votes, what's happening uh, a lot of us refer to that as, as running out of runway. That's where they have a problem. And that's where they have to panic. And incidentally, that's what happened in places like Florida in the 2020 election, according to the data that I have seen. Examination of our voter rolls led Jeff. Meaning they tried stealing Florida, too. They tried stealing. They ran out of vote. They ran out of runway because they didn't have enough because the voter rolls are too tight there. That's what he's saying there. They ran out. They, they couldn't do it. They couldn't. They ran out of people whose names they could use because the Florida's voting rolls are too tight. Trump won won Florida by three percent. Nah, nah. He probably won it by like ten. F down an unexpected path. See, we all know the six states because those are the ones which just shocked us, but we don't know about the other states where there's desperate efforts. That failed. You're, you're always thinking when you think about 2020, you know, about the six states, the six states. It's not the six states. No, no. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think it's a lot more than the six states. I think it's like the 40 states. It's the 50 states. People think the six, oh, it's those, it's those. No, no, no. You know how they say Texas is in play? Texas is in play. What the hell? They always try seeding that. Every every election cycle, we hear about Texas is in play. I'm like, how the hell is Texas in play? How, what does that even mean? Texas? What, really? Texas? And they're like, if Texas falls, that's it. This country's going to be blue forever. 
And it's like, how the heck is Texas in play? It doesn't even make any sense. It makes no sense, but you're about to see that soon. As he discovered a system known as the Help America Vote Verification System, or HAVV. The Help America Vote Act created a system whereby citizens wishing to register to vote without state. Yep, and that explains why everyone's like, why is everyone so focused? This is a great point, Ed. Everyone's like, why is everyone so focused about them shutting down the count? Like, who cares if they, if they just count the next day, right? That's what someone who, who isn't corrupt, someone who, that's a good faith question that would be asked by someone who isn't corrupt. You'd be like, so why does that matter? I don't understand. Who cares? So if they, they pause for the night, it's two o'clock in the morning, the workers want to go home. Why is that why is that shady? And it's because of this. It's because the reason they're pausing is they're trying to figure out how many more freaking ballots do we need. And that's why I was talking about earlier where I said in Georgia, well, all of a sudden it's like they, they keep saying we we only got we're down to our last 60,000 ballots to count. And then a day later, they still have like another they still they have another hundred thousand ballots to count. You're like, what the hell is happening here? How did you go backwards? Weren't you counting all you were counting all day yesterday? You got closer. And you have more ballots today than you had what you announced you had yesterday. How's this happening? State issued identification could have their identity verified by the Social Security Administration. Election officials can send the person's name, birth date, and the last four digits of their social security number to the on we'll call magic. Remember, for five months, you find an eerie that you can log in and see when you who when you voted, who you voted for. I don't know that I can see that on mine. I don't think I can see that. I'm in New Jersey. I don't think I can. Do, I don't think we have that capacity here. But let's check out this this Help America Vote Act thing. Let me let me let this play for a bit. Online HAVV system and quickly be informed if that information matched an American citizen. Looking at the purpose of the system as defined on the Social Security HAVV website confirms that the system is designed for use in the rare case where a citizen does not have state issued identification. However, when J so the purpose of HAVV is if you don't have your state ID. Okay. Jeff downloaded the lookup statistics from the HAVV site. He noted that there were many more lookups than he expected, and that on average one-fourth of them are rejected as not matching a citizen. I don't think you can escape the conclusion here that the HAVV lookup system is being used to game our voter rolls, to game our registration systems. Look at how many lookup systems there were. That there was 10 million by Democrats and three million, three and a half million of Republicans in 2020. So check this out because this is going to freak you out. If they're not being used to game our registration systems, they're certainly being used for another improper purpose. And there needs to be investigation by those who can compel answers from the Social Security Administration and from the states and counties that are using the HAVV system. What you are seeing here is the calendar year 2020 HAVV lookups from the top 10 states. You'll see as the numbers pile up through the year and they accelerate as we get closer to the November election. Yes, you are seeing millions and hundreds of thousands in all of these states. And remember, on average, a quarter of them do not return a match. So people are trying to find out, trying, trying, trying to prove their ID using the HIV, H, HIVV system. And... 25% of them don't know their own basic information. 25%. Now, I just told a little white lie. These are not the top 10 states. Watch what happens when we add Texas to the mix. That's right. Over <laughs> 6 million HAVV lookups in 2020. How is that even possible? How is that even possible? Six million HAVV lookups of people who are like, I don't have my ID. I need to like look it up. Six million, six point seven million. It's actually six point eight, six seven nine nine, six point eight million. Wow. Wow. How is that five times as much as California? 
Are we really supposed to believe that so many people across this country show up to register to vote without a valid ID? And then we also supposed to believe that a quarter of them across the country uh, do not know their name, their birth date, and the last four of their social security number. How does that happen? <laughs> now, maybe they look up twice on the same person. Like you can see someone putting in the wrong social security number and then they have to like re-enter it. So, so maybe the numbers get inflated that way. I'm trying to just play devil's advocate here for those who want to argue that no, 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 no there's nothing shady here. So try to steel man the opposition. 25% wrong? 25%? If you believe that, I, I don't know what to tell you. Attempts to find information about the use and policies of the HAVV system by election officials through public records requests have been... Michigan, in the, in, when, they, when they introduced Proposition 3, the 2022 election, they destroyed you guys. They destroyed you. They made it impossible to vet out fraud. They destroyed you. Destroyed you. That's what it should be. Okay. Non-responsive or unhelpful. So that's part one was voter rolls. The number of ballots referenced in the adjudication. That's part one. We're going to do part two now. That was part one. Thoughts? Are you freaked out yet? Are you freaked out yet? That's what I want to look at. Make sure I'm good over here. Okay, I'm good over there. Make sure I'm good on locals. Check my locals. Why don't I see locals with my locals? I do not see locals. What's doing there? Well, I moved it, that's why. I'm good in locals. I'm good everywhere. Part two. Let's go. Contentious election in American history. The 2020 election was perhaps the most contentious election in American history. Those who went to bed on election night with President Donald Trump seemingly headed to a sure electoral college victory awoke to a nightmare. During the night, Counties in numerous battleground states had stopped counting, and when they resumed, Democrat Joe Biden's numbers kept going up in all of them. Over the next several days, states kept counting absentee votes. Now, to be fair, there was anticipation, and this is this is perhaps a little bit of a mistake that the right made, where they were like, don't rely on the mail, don't rely on the mail, you have to go in-person ballots. And frankly, it, I think we need to to the extent that drop boxes are allowed, we should basically tell people to get out and vote. You have to do it. You have to do it. Because otherwise, it's like, it's like, so th things come up. You don't get out to the ballot box on, on election day. It's just, it's stupid. It's stupid. It opens up this Pandora's box where it's like, they can basically have like a month to vote and, and the GOP has one day. That sounds crazy. But we, that's a self-immolating approach, to my mind. I want, I want to see ground game where there's actual efforts to mirror the images that the left uses, the legal, the legal measures in places that allow for ballot harvesting, which I think should be illegal. In places that allow for it, you need to, you need to be harvesting. You need to be harvesting. Even in democratic places, you need to be harvesting. The reason you need to be harvesting in democratic places is because if you're not the one doing the harvesting, some Democrat's doing it. And if a Democrat's the one doing it, eh, it's going to be 100% Biden there. Next, we're going to talk about actual ballots, which begs the question, how's the hanging chat? Mm, you can do better. <laughs> you can do better, Ed. 
Space Joe, my amigo. Thank you for your voice of reason for a lawyer. You're all right, homie. Oh, thank you, Greg. I appreciate you too. The right forgot to stuff the mailbox thinking they would actually do signature match, so vote in person only. Yeah, yeah. Terrible, 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 terrible. I want to do that. Votes until finally, Joe Biden was declared the winner by the news media. Despite the best efforts of Donald Trump supporters to delay certification until the growing amount of evidence could be fully investigated, Congress made the election official on January 6, 2021. After over three years of research. All right, let's go. Number two, the machines. Now we can get back to Jeff's forensic examination of the Mesa County, Colorado election server. Because of his decades of experience with Microsoft SQL Server databases, he began his analysis there. So when I had uh, opened up the server image and saw it was there, it was immediately apparent that we weren't going to get any good information from the typical Windows log files uh, as they had all been, uh, been configured so that uh, they overrode every uh, every few days, maybe a week, the point is, by the time this image was made in uh, 2021, uh, there was nothing left to tell what had happened in, uh, in 2020. So I decided to dig into the database, uh, actually databases. Um, this was a, a version, a, a newer version of Dominion, uh, 5.13 as I recall that uh, they had actually gone to using uh, three databases to run the election rather right. than uh, just one, which had done had done previously. For instance, uh, Antrim in 2020, Antrim, Michigan, was still using the older version that only had one database. So the uh, there's a main database that has the election definitions, uh, the candidates, the contests, all of that. It's also where the final vote counts are stored that get reported. Then there's an adjudication database uh, that all of the ballots and batches, a record of every single one, gets placed into there and it manages the adjudication process. Adju I want you to know something. <clears throat> you don't believe in large conspiracies, vote by mail fraud combined with no signature match. I think in, in many states that's true. I think in many states that's true. But if it's vote by mail fraud combined with, so that means the mail fraud had to have access to ballots, right? I mean, you have to get the ballots. So that's still the voting rolls, right? You need to have voter rolls that are kicking out these ballots that you can basically intercept these ballots instead of them going to these houses that so you're basically intercepting those ballots, generating those ballots for yourself, and then mailing them in. Still the voter rolls at the end of the day because they do check the voter rolls when they're looking at a ballot and seeing is this legitimate voter. So that's access to the ballots. It's access to the information that's stored in the voting system. That, you, that helps you determine who's like who's likely to skip out on this election, right? And frankly, by now, by now, I'm sure that they have the databases of people who they voted for in 2020, 2022. So they don't need to look it up anymore. That's why they, that's why they need to be cleaned. You don't even need to look into it anymore. The research is done. Because you don't want to, because if you think about this, okay, imagine that you were part of a scheme to help flood tons of ballots in, in 2020 or 2022. Imagine you were part of that scheme, right? So now you wouldn't want to do a brand new search because you know, and let's say you, you got out 50,000 illegal votes. So now if you start running a brand new search to see who didn't vote in the last several election cycles, you're going to miss those same people because that you had you voted for them in 2020. You voted for them in 2022. 
So they're going to reflect as if, oh yeah, they did vote last four years. So they're more likely to vote this time, and you you wouldn't even you lose sight of the fact that you're the one who voted for them. That's why they really need to clean these ballots up. They re they, they really 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 need to clean these ballots up, and that's a state by state basis. That can't be done on a federal level. The only way it could be done on a federal level. The only way it could be done on a federal level is if there would be some sort of federal law which says that you need to clean up the states who wish to participate in, in a federal election need to clean up their, their voter rolls every 10 years and sort of set some sort of yardstick for what cleaning up means. But that's difficult legislation to get through. You really need control of the House and Senate to do that. They're not going to go along with it. They're going to say you're fighting democracy. You're trying to keep black people from voting because you don't want to have you don't want to because you don't want to have double names on voter rolls. I mean, you can basically say that that's a mandatory requirement for submission of electoral ballots, for acceptance of electoral ballots, and force them. To do it properly. Greg Warner hitting up with five good logic memberships. Thank you, Greg. You're so awesome. Supporting, supporting the cause. Those people who wish to become members of the following. Who we got here? Who I got? Oh no. Oh no, I'm losing it. Oh, this thing is working so slow. And courtesy of Greg Warner, now that I have this open, D. Mathers, a helping hand, Gina Regina, Galloway Raider, and Lisa Lisa. Lisa Lisa, all of you being gifted good logic memberships. Welcome to the following, you new followers, you not followers of me, because I'm most certainly, most definitely not the leader of the following. I am a follower, just like you. I don't believe in large conspiracy. No, I got that already. I covered that. Allegan says you can purchase voting rolls and then request ballot not to address on file. See, why would that be something that's legal? This is <laughs> sounds crazy. <laughs> it sounds so insane. It really sounds insane. Judication is the process of determining what choices were made by the voter on a paper ballot. If the ballot has been filled out at a polling location, the ballot is normally scanned into a tabulator there. In the case of absentee ballots, they are normally scanned into high-speed scanning devices at the county central counting location. Either way, the result is the same, a digital image of the ballot, which is a fancy way of saying a picture, is stored. Later, the ballot image is read by the election vendor software, which uses the programmed ballot definitions to determine what votes are marked. If all votes can be determined to the software's satisfaction, they are added to the election database. If not, a team of adjudication judges are shown the ballot image, and they decide what the voter's intent was. After that, the votes again are stored in the election database. It took me almost no time at all to realize that the number of ballots referenced in the adjudication database was not the same as the number that was in the main database. This was the first and frankly most critical find that I made uh, because then uh, I had to pursue and see what happened. This is the relationship of the databases in the Dominion system used in the 2020 Mesa County election. After the record of a batch of ballots and their digital images is stored in the master database, they are copied to the adjudication database, which handles the adjudication process we just described. After all ballots in that batch have gone through the process and all the votes determined, those vote counts are stored to the master database. What Jeff found was that the master database had record of 971 batches and 90,622 votes for president, which is only one vote off from the official totals reported by the state of Colorado. The adjudication database, however, contained record of only 915 batches and 86,033 total ballots. What? What? How is this so close to the number of, of votes when you're missing 10% of... How is that even possible? 
you lose 10% of your batches and only 3% of your votes. That means votes are being shoved in there. That's what that has to mean. Right? And how do you how do you lose these bat I don't, what the hell's happening here? He soon discovered that the adjudication database in use at the end of the counting was not the same database which was used at the beginning. This original adjudication database contained record of 267 batches and 25,913 total ballots. It was very apparent that something in Mesa County had gone horribly wrong. Looking at these two different uh, sets of databases, particularly the adjudication databases, it became clear that at one point the system had stopped using one of them and it switched over to using the other. If that were done, you might expect that uh, all of the batches before that time would be in the one and all the batches would, after that time would be in the other. Instead, uh, what I found was that there was a mixture. When the new database had been created, some of the records of the batches had been transferred to it uh, and some hadn't. So Mesa County started counting the absentee and some early uh, ballots on the 19th of October, a couple of weeks before the actual election. And on the third day of the counting in the afternoon is when this event happened. Now, I mentioned earlier that the log files uh, that are provided by Windows were, were useless in figuring out what was going on. But I did find that there was a log file in the database, in the main database, that did record pretty much every transaction, every action that was done in the system, particularly with the adjudication. This enabled me to see what actually happened. According to the records and log file from the Dominion database in Mesa County, here is what did happen. From October 19th through a little after 2 p.m. local time on October 21st, almost 26,000 ballots had been scanned and counted. This represents more than a quarter of what would be the final count. At 2.18 p.m., a new adjudication database was created. It was initially empty. The records for batch 1 and batches 59 through 267 were then copied to the new database, and at that time the new adjudication database became the one used by the Dominion software, effectively orphaning the source records of over 5,500 ballots left only in the old database. The transferred ballots were then reprocessed, which included sending them through adjudication again. This is when the adjudication judges in Mesa County began reporting problems, such as seeing the same ballots again and overall adjudication counts not increasing when they completed work on a ballot. The records show that of the approximately 20,000 ballots processed twice, 1,608 of them had to go through human adjudication the first time. However, the second time those same ballots were processed, that number was only 961. <laughs> the only explanation for this is that the ballot images for those ballots were not all the same and had been altered or replaced. So my findings uh, finally got some attention and uh, I began writing what would become Mesa Report number three. Dr. Walter Doherty provided help in validating the information and his name is uh, with mine on that report. Uh, let me address this right now. The uh, district attorney of Mesa County put out a uh, document. He actually did a, a live presentation for the county. And uh, I would like everyone to look at that rebuttal because it is, to my mind, and, and, and to other experts that have looked at it, in, in entirely unconvincing in its rebuttal. It uses surveillance footage and then creates a story around that surveillance footage. The problem is that the surveillance footage uh, actually shows screens that are unreadable. So they are guessing and creating a narrative to explain what I found around this, this, this surveillance video. The same thing happened in the municipal election in uh, March and April That's of 2021. Uh, the same creation of a new database, copying of some records and, and not others. Actually, in, in, in the 2021 election, it was even a little more bizarre as far as what records were copied and not copied. So the fact that it happened twice 
uh, makes human error very unlikely. And uh, to, to my knowledge, no one has come up with an actual procedure that could be done by a clerk that could create this particular effect. Uh, remember, there was, there was some selection going on as to what ballots and batches got copied to the new database. Read the rebuttal. Um, it's, uh, it's linked to on my websites. And see if you think that it's a uh, convincing argument against what I found. Wow. Jeff found that the 2021 Grand Junction municipal election showed that on March 3rd. Hold on a second. Let me just get to this real quick. Greg Warner. Give to 10 friggin' memberships. The memberships are dropping like wild. And you get a membership. And you get a membership. And you get a membership. And this time it was Pug Genie. Pi Squared. Quiet One. Hangman. V, v Takasu. Peter Spinney. Tia Tay. Tia Tia Tay, Saffon, Jamie Harrison, Salty, Salty, my boy, gifted a membership by Greg Warner. Welcome to the following, my friends. Welcome. The following is not at all, not at all, not at all a cult. Type of cult. It's 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 not at all. It's not. It's not. It's, there's no proof. Okay. It's not. A, it's it's not at all. It's not. It's not at all. It's not. It's just not. Okay. It's just not. It's not at all. Not. Just not. Not at all. Not at all. Not. Not. Not at all. Not at all. A cult. Type of cult. Uh, I, I I posted the Michigan absentee request on locals. What am I looking for here? Johnny Reb says at least eleven thousand fraudulent addresses in Nevada 2020 election. Crowder confirmed that. That's the fraudulent addresses. <laughs> <laughs> it's insanity. So what he shared here was this. Michigan absentee voter for, for, form. Where you can... You can select different address than the registered address. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's really great. So you can have them all come to you. <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere. Hey, you know that you know that voter form? That's you know that 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 voter form which you're planning on sending out in two months to uh to Mary? Just send it to me. Send it to me, Joe. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Insane. Insane. Greg Warner. The more you read chat, the more you get patriots, Hi. homie. I understand you're not a beggar reading, non-paying chat, but holy effing crap. A guy like you giving a voice to a small guy is priceless. Read, mother effer, read. I try. I try. It really depends on, on a lot as to what's happening. I try. But I appreciate the suggestion, brother. Um, <laughs> it's really. I have never even considered that before. I've never considered that. God. What am I supposed to? What, what, what do you want? What am I missing? What am I missing? Uh, I'm looking. I'm checking the chat to see if if Greg's going to confirm that he met my friend instead of Mother Effer. <laughs> I didn't take it. Some of these small non-paying piece got a point. I'm scrolling up just just because of your request. What what what? I'm scrolling. I'm 
do try to read. I do try to read. <laughs> I do try. <laughs> I know that's what he meant. <laughs> Missing facts. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. My chat's picking on me. Both chats are picking on me. My YouTube chat, my ghetto. They're all picking on me. I'm going back five seconds. I can like make sure I because he's he's just started a point. 30th. Jeff found that the 2021 Grand Junction municipal election showed that on March 30th, coincidentally the third day ballots were being processed by the county. Records of over 5,500 ballots were left orphaned in the original adjudication database, while almost 3,000 were transferred to the new database and reprocessed. In this election, four city council races were decided by less than 3,300 votes, well within the margin of orphaned and reprocessed ballots. The difference in human adjudications between the first and second processing was even greater than in the 2020 election. It's not the same batch. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The district attorney was asked after his presentation uh, what technical experts he relied upon to rebut this very technical report that I wrote. His response was, yes, that they did consult the experts. When asked where they got those experts, he replied from Dominion. To validate his findings, Jeff did not only rely on the data. To get the facts for my report, I interviewed both Tina Peters and Sandra Brown from Mesa County on several occasions in person. Uh, it went on for hours. And I was completely convinced that whatever happened was not any kind of human error. Uh, they described in great detail uh, what would be required to even come close to something like uh, what I had found. And both were adamant that this would never have happened because it would have caused so many problems uh, for them just trying to reconcile the election. After the release of the report, Jeff and his family were harassed by an investigator for the Mesa County District Attorney. So after the report was released, uh, I was traveling and uh, my wife got a phone call back at home. <laughs> from investigating. <laughs> I don't know why I think this is really funny. That is weird. It's almost like someone dressed him. <laughs> I never I didn't even noticed it until CC pointed this out. Oh my gosh. That's... <laughs> At first, at first, I thought CC was talking to me. I was like, "Wait a second, is my color, my color, not right? my color, not right here." And so I was like, "I got to adjust my color." And then I was like, "Oh, oh, yeah, mine isn't great, but it's a lot better than that. It's a lot, it's a lot better than the guy wearing the the hospital shirts." <laughs> uh. It's a Gator Struey from Mesa County who was working for the DA. Struey told her that, that uh, he couldn't find my number and had found her number in a database. Now, she obviously told him that I wasn't home and uh, she would pass along the message, which she did. This wasn't the last time Nancy heard from investigator Struey. A few days later, Mr. Struey called me back. I told him that I had passed on his information to Jeff, but didn't know if Jeff was gonna call him back or not. Jeff wasn't all that thrilled about talking to him. And at this point, Mr. Struey got very upset with me and threatened Maybe. legal action, including an FBI raid to come into our home to find the evidence that I was hiding from him. 
what was really clear after this call was that Mr. Struey wanted to find more charges that he could throw at the clerks in Mesa County. <laughs> this is why I don't read the chat. You're killing me. You're all killing me here. You're killing me. It's like, how much is the focus on her? You, you, okay, you guys can afford to chat amongst yourselves. I'm I'm working here. I'm working. And you're like, oh, read the chat. Read the chat. I read the chat and I... I, I... <laughs> how am I supposed to do <laughs> I'm I'm seeing comments about the guy's collar, which which makes me laugh. I'm seeing new new ridiculous definitions of MF. <laughs> no, no, I'm no to hell with y'all. Okay, I'm, I'm not reading you. I need to focus on what's happening here. I don't even know what the I still don't know what the Mesa thing is. I know for sure I'm supposed to know what that means, and I'm still not 100 percent sure. It's <laughs> this is terrible. This is terrible. I'm doing terrible work here. Oh my God. I blame all of you. I blame all, every one of you. <laughs> yeah, apparently they are. Apparently. Uh, that's right. Must must focus. Must focus. That's right. <laughs> you guys are killing me here. And he was demanding to know who Jeff had spoken with. Can one of you explain to me what the whole batch thing was? Because I'm very confused now. I'm too busy. <laughs> I'm, I'm very distracted now. I'm very distracted. This is not good. <laughs> uh. <laughs> This is not, I'm supposed to be working. I'm supposed to be working. I seriously don't know what's happening with the batches. I don't know. I know that there was a second thing, and then when the second thing, and the numbers didn't match up. I need to explain this to someone. Like, you know, I'm going to go on Twitter spaces, and they're going to ask me, so what's your proof of the election fraud? I'm going to be the, the Mesa image thing. And they'll be like, what's that? And I'm going to be like, you know what, the batches. And the number of adjudications didn't match. And it doesn't make any sense why the adjudications didn't match. And they're like, what does that even mean? And I'm going to sit there filibustering. And I'm, I'm going to be like, you know, stop asking me questions, MF. <laughs> and then they're going to think I'm cursing them out. And I'm going to be like, no, I, I mean, I, mean my, my pure. I don't know what you mean. This is not good. I'm supposed to become, I'm watching this to become knowledgeable. I'm supposed to read the freaking chats. This is all Greg's fault. Batches, we don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> nice. That was good. That's what I expect from you, Ed. Badges, we don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> uh, that was good. That was really good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With who was cooperating with us so that he now could gotta, go after them. I'm going to make you watch it again, okay? Because I don't know what she's talking about. Now all I'm staring at is her collar, and, and I, I think the FBI is raiding her. I don't know what's happening with her. Gator Struy. A few days later, Mr. Struy called me back. I told him that I had passed on his information to Jeff, but didn't know if Jeff was going to call him back or not. Jeff wasn't all that thrilled about talking to him. And at this point, Mr. Struy got very upset with me and threatened legal action, including an FBI raid to come into our home to find the evidence that I was hiding from him. What was really clear after this call was that Mr. Struy wanted to find more charges that he could throw at the clerks in Mesa County. And he was demanding to know who Jeff had spoken with, who was cooperating with us, so that he could go after them and make more of a case against Tina Peters and the clerks in Mesa County. All right, I want to be clear here. Everyone will assume, everyone will assume that this is a cover up for the cheats. That the reason that they would get involved here is as a cover up for the cheats. And I just want to make this point to you. 
And I mean this seriously. Sometimes it could be that it's not that they're trying to cover up cheating. They just are scared of analysis that may expose flaws in the system. Because I think that these institutionalists, I think the the Amy Coney Barrett's of the world, I think the Fay Rays of the world, which is actually my reference to Chris Ray, I think the Brad Raffensperger's of the world, I don't assume that their mindset is, oh, I want to try and find a way to keep Trump out of office. Is it that possibly a factor in their motivations? Yes. But it could be something far more innocuous than that. <clears throat> it could be something far less malignant. It could be something more innocent, which is CYA. They go into CYA mode. That if you start digging and you actually find that there are problems, that's a reflection that the way we ran our election sucked. So in order to sort of cover their own asses that no, 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 this election was right, everything was fine, they'd rather shove things under the table that expose how crappily they run their elections, how poorly they protect their elections from being defrauded. So instead, they cover up for the fraud. They end up, now you can say, you, and you might find that to be no less malignant. And that, that's your prerogative. I, I can understand that perspective. But it is a different, I'm just trying to point out it's a different mindset. I think that there are some people here who have motivation that, yes, we, we need to keep Trump out of office, doesn't matter what the by beg borrow steal kill whatever it is you have to do we have to keep him out of office and obviously that includes stealing an election no matter how fraudulent you have to be there are people who are going to that level i think that there are other people who aid and abet them not out of necessarily an interest that's aligned with theirs it's self-interest of oh well i don't want it to look like i did a crap job here and i think that that plays into enabling the fraudsters and they're happier to enable them so that this way they can pass on that no our elections are great our elections are wonderful and i'm and 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 the people running our elections are doing a whiz bang perfect job that's why i think the fey rays of the world would come out there and say safest election ever it's like the you know me thinks he doth protest too much safest ever really 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 we see bizarre th safest ever you know, you know the, the how ripe it is to attack an election when you have the more mail in ballots you had, and we had 50 times the number of mail in ballots that we ever had. Ever. And you're calling it the safest. Why are you going so over the top as to call this one the safest ever? It's because it's clearly that you're just overcompensating for the fact that you know that this election was ripe to be rigged. It was, it was ripe to be rigged. And you saw left and right, you you saw more better than anyone, Chris Ray. You saw how how they how they changed the way that they were they were doing their signature matches and in prior elections, whereas they would knock out, let's say, I don't know, 12% of signature matches. This time they were knocking out less than one percent. Which makes no sense, especially when you have all these newbies who have never done vote by mail doing it and far more ripe to make mistakes than people who regularly vote by mail. So if anything, whatever number of, of, of toss outs that you normally have should have been geometrically exponentially higher in this last one. And yet instead of being higher, it was insanely lower. So you and you saw that Fay Ray. You know what happened. Yeah, you go out there called safest, best election ever of all time. Why are you using such ridiculously gross terms and, and, and obvious exaggeration? It's because don't even look here. I don't want to hear from you. Does that mean that he's looking to steal the election from Trump personally? That he's like, oh, I've got to do this to help make sure we keep Trump out of office? Maybe. It's possible. But it also could be that he doesn't want his incompetence exposed or the incompetence of other people running elections exposed. It really could be something as simple as cronyism. That it's like, oh yeah, you know, we we need it's it's best it's in the long run it's for the it's for, it's for the greater good for the American people to believe that our elections are well run. 
Now, I'm going to tell you this. If you think that there was fraud election in the previous elections, that's not a reason to be discouraged from voting. That's a reason to tell you go out there and vote harder. Encourage other people to vote. Because the only time that we ever find fraud, the only time we ever talk of fraud is when the numbers are close. So you got to, and you know, if you if you let them swamp us in the next election, that's crazy. That's stupid. It's self-defeating. You might as well just, you know, you, you, you might as well just bury your head in the sand and sit and scream into the earth, whining about how angry you are, like a loser. The idea is to fight. Fight against it. Fight, 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 fight. Like your life depends on it, or more than your life, your kid's life, which is more important to most of us. Like their freedoms are on the line. Now, a lot of you might say, well, I don't really care what his motivation is. Once he's aiding and abetting, it doesn't even matter whether he's doing it because of less evil motives. He's still aiding and abetting. And I got to tell you something. You're right. You're right. But I think it's important for us to understand what the motivations are because that way you'll better understand what they're likely to do the next time. In certain ways, someone like a, a Chris Ray is more likely to keep doing the same damn thing irrespective of who the candidates are. Because he's all about just covering his own stupid ass. <coughs> Pardon my French. Anyway, it is the banality of evil, no integrity. Here, here. Um, Greg Warner. Fair enough, bro. Chat is not the same mind as a lawyer POV. <laughs> I'm me. I'm. I'm. I'm I, I mind furriered up. Continue up. Continue on your own, my friend. Sorry, I thought normies could contextualize. Honestly, play it again. LMAO. Forgot how dumb chat is. They're not dumb. They're awesome. I was having a great time. It was fun. No reason to apologize at all. I appreciate your support as always, brother. And it was fun. That was that was that was <laughs> it was fun. They'd have gone away with it too. If it wasn't for, for those <laughs> would have gone away for it with it too. If it wasn't for those meddling da data analysts. Now we're in my wheelhouse. I saw this story from Tina, who was house raided. She explains it way better. This lady is missing a lot of the story. What actually happened? You'd be shocked. I can find it and send you the link. Um, yeah, I mean, was, yeah, you can do that. I don't know how long her story is. I don't know. I can't give her like a half hour. Let me go back to this woman here and her story. To Jeff, but didn't know if Jeff was going to call him back or not. Jeff wasn't all that thrilled about talking to him. And at this point, Mr. Shuri got very upset with me and threatened legal action, including an FBI raid to come into our home to find the evidence that I was hiding from him. What was really clear after this call was that Mr. Struey wanted to find more charges that he could throw at the clerks in Mesa County. And he was demanding to know who Jeff had spoken with, who was cooperating with us so that he could go after them and make more of a case against Tina Peters and the clerks in Mesa County. Um, John Reb says, Joe, I normally listen to you next day. You're great to listen to at work because you explain rather than just show a lot of your content. I try. I try. Investigators. Strewy also contacted reporter, co-author, Dr. Walter Darity, Darity in an attempt to learn who had cooperated with the report. Okay, so we get that they didn't like the report and that they're pretty corrupt and try and cover it up. Thank you for your interest in my forensic report of the Mesa County Election Database. It's my sincere hope that your department uses my document findings to get... This wasn't ah! the first time. <laughs> it's my sincere hope that your department uses my document findings to get to the bottom of the manipulation which occurred both during both 2020 and 2020 elections held in Mesa County. However, I must ask you, please forward all additional questions about the report to Tina Peters Council. Thank you, Jeff O'Donnell. Attempt to end the harassment... That was the email they sent Shui on April 21st, 2022. This wasn't the first time and certainly wasn't the last, but I asked myself a question that I'm sure many of you have asked yourself over the last couple of years. 
How did we get here? So we now have the Mesa Report 3, which gives a timeline, a, a in some cases, second by second description of what happened. And my contention is that the only thing that could have caused this was some software process uh, inside the machine uh, that had decided to do a reprocess of a whole lot of ballots, you know, about 25% of what would end up being. Tread carefully here, my friend. Tread carefully. Walk carefully. Uh, the whole count of Mesa County uh, was reprocessed. My goal in the report was to not bring the whole Trump-Biden thing into it, although that's obviously hangs heavy in the air. It, I don't believe, mentions uh, either of those candidates. It doesn't help when you make this movie that you have, you know, a, a, a sticker on in the back of you which says, you know, supporting Trump, which is what he had in the first video. And I did not get into the individual votes that were in the batches and ballots <coughs> that were manipulated. But I did calculate them, and the results were shocking. Jeff was able to calculate the votes for President Trump and Joe Biden, which are contained in the ballots that were reprocessed as well as the ones which came after. In order to compare them fairly, the small number of Election Day votes were omitted. By doing this we eliminate the absentee versus Election Day vote bias which exists between Republican and Democrat voters, and we can expect the mail-in votes to be received in a mostly random pattern. The first column here are the percentages of the votes between the two candidates using the ballots which went through the reprocessing. President Trump received only 51.1% of those votes, or just a little over half. The second column shows the percentages for the ballots which came after the reprocessing event. In these, President Trump received 69.5%, which is more in line with what is expected in this very red county. Now, we would expect the mail-in vote percentage to be roughly the same throughout. Uh, we can show that by looking at the precinct distribution, which uh, in the case of Mesa is, is randomized very, very nicely throughout. Uh, and when you think about it, this will be more important in the next chapter of our story. But for now, uh, people will receive the uh, mail-in ballots uh, somewhat randomly, or they request them randomly, they fill them out when they think about it, they mail them in when they think about it, they go into drop boxes, or they go into the mail, the U.S. mail, where they are mixed in and finally delivered to the county. Uh, this means you have a fairly random assortment. So we're dealing with these facts. Uh, the first fact is that these ballots at the beginning, the first quarter or so of them, were manipulated and treated in ways that they should not have been treated. Secondly, uh, the votes on those ballots are markedly lower uh, for the uh, President Trump than the rest of the ballots afterwards. Now, I'm not saying that there weren't other uh, ways of fraud. You see, this is why... <clears throat> You're saying it's not about Trumpy Biden, but you film this with this, a sign that says Trump Save America behind you. That's not, it's just bad optics. That occurred. This is one, though, that thanks to math, we can test for. And the fact that you only have uh, 51 or so percent in those processed, reprocessed ballots, and you've got 69 and a half in all of the rest, strongly indicates to me. Uh, that the uh, vote for President Trump was suppressed uh, in that first set. Uh, and if you assume for the moment that 69.5% was the actual will of the mail-in voters in Mesa County, we're talking about a 3,400 vote difference, meaning uh, President Trump would have had 3,400 or so more votes, and Joe Biden would have had 3,400 or so less votes, which is uh, very significant. We're talking uh, six, seven percent of the total. Um, 
Real Patriots party says, go read my first one you missed about Prop 3. I can understand being three years behind, but not getting behind in the rants. Fair enough. I get I was infinitely better than those Google knockoffs, LOL. For one reason or another, StreamYard actually takes out rants from being in my regular stream. I don't know why they do that. Everything else that comes in there, when you guys are chatting in the ghetto, I see that. Oh, see, RPP says, Joe, Prop 3 failed miserably. Everyone at every polling place I went to was against it. They stole that like they stole the governorship from Tudor. It's the rigged game. I'm a poll chairman in Detroit. Well, Detroit's the one place that it should have, should have, that's where it should have died. You know, that's the place that it should have had stronger support. And you're saying that, I don't get it. I think that, I think that, I think Michigan is the most corrupt election place in the country. I'm sorry for missing the first one, brother. Since analyzing Mesa County, Jeff has found similar issues with batches and ballots being improperly processed in other counties. These findings will be public when the legal cases in the states they affect are resolved. And in the next part of this movie, you will see how the analysis of Mesa led to Jeff's discovery of a nationwide pattern which exists in counties using all five major election software vendors. The big takeaway from all this, the machines have the ability. And Dana says, I'm not saying it's a cult, but I don't like the knowledge reports. Seems a bit much. The knowledge reports? I don't know what that means. I mean this that we're watching? I'm not sure what that means, brother. To change our votes. And as such, they can't be trusted ever again uh, fingerprints of fraud.com I don't know if I'm gonna go through all that right now I don't know if I'm gonna go through that now all right should we should I try checking that out I have a feeling that report's going to be fingerprints. Fraud. Dot com. How long is this report? Oh my gosh, it's taking a long time to load. Look at that. Look up here. Oh no. I'm scared what we're going to see here. 88 pages. Yeah. Let me go to page 26, see the discussion and conclusions. We'll, we'll focus here. <clears throat> the events described above show significant manipulation of a large number of batch ballot and vote records in DVS EMS database in Mesa County, and there are only a few possible explanations for the manipulation. One, human error. Extensive questioning Mesa County election clerks has ruled out human error as the reason for the unauthorized creation of election databases on October 21, 2020, followed by reprocessing of 20,000 ballots. These personnel have a strong recollection of the events of October 21, 2020. And because of the timelines established both by the recollection and the corresponding database time stamps, it is evident that any and all unusual actions they might have taken on that day were in response to the new database's creation having already occurred and batch records being copied into the new database, which affected their ability to complete adjudication on some in-process ballots. In other words, they were dealing with a crisis on that day, so that's why it became memorable to them. Similarly, Mesa County election officials have a strong recollection of the events of March 30, 2021. They state <laughs> they did not take any steps 
<laughs> that would have given rise to the unauthorized creation of new election databases during the 2021 Grand, Jun Grand Junction Municipal Election on that day, followed by the reprocessing of 2,974 ballots. While an error or, or failure of the DVS EMS server is a possibility, it strains credulity that any error could cause the numerous specific events which are documented above. In particular, the non-sequential reloading of the batches during the 2021 Grand Junction Municipal Election, when compared with the sequential reloading in the November 2020 general election, makes it inherently impossible for the same error to have caused both chain of events. Okay. However, as noted in the section above labeled al algorithmically triggered, the DVS EMS server could have been pre-programmed to perform the unauthorized new database creations and the selected record manipulation, which were followed based on pre-programmed criteria related to election results at the time. This would be the result of an advanced planning and the, the deliberate design of the software to alter outcomes when unexpected voting patterns were detected. That's obviously not a statement of fact he's making. That's speculation. Got to say that because some people are really quick on the on the trigger finger with their filing of complaints. Network breach or pre-installation of manipulating software or algorithm. A device external to the DVSD suite network. So this is talking about hacking from the outside. Could have connected to the DVSD suite and to the EMS server using the open SQL server port 1433 open web services port 80 or through any other open port directly into the DVS software. So maybe someone hacked into Dominion software. As outlined in report number two, forensic examination analysis report by D. Gould. <laughs> there are numerous flaws in the security of the server, many which provide an outside entity with direct access to the SQL server database or the application itself. So this was ripe for being hacked. The DVSD suite makes use of SOAP mes messaging protocol. API calls through its web server, so malicious procedures could be triggered by simple port 80 access. All Windows log files, <coughs> which would show these network accesses, are configured as specified by DVS manuals published by the Colorado Secretary of State as mandatory technical procedures for county election officials to keep only a small amount of log entries before they are overwritten. And this is what he was talking about. The problem he had was that there was a lot of overwriting. Therefore, no record of external access to the DBSD suite is available on Windows logs. Regardless of whether the voting system was connected to an external network or device, even momentarily, or whether a pre-installed software algorithm was triggered by the external command or complex set of variable conditions, the execution of manipulating software or algorithm could plausibly be responsible for the results described in our findings. So this is, you know, some of you were saying that you don't really trust that there was this whole conspiracy. This would not need to be a whole conspiracy. This seriously could be like, you know, two college students who are good with computers and figure out how to hack in and just manipulate the algorithm is basically what he's implying. Conclusions. Unauthorized creation of a new tabulation and adjudication databases occurred during the county of the November 2020 general election, along with the selective copying of batch and ballot records from the original databases to the new ones. The manipulation places all 25,913 initial ballots counted into a state where they cannot be validated. Some, because it's, it's possible that their vote information was changed and unverifiable that it was not, and the rest because their chain of evidence has been intentionally obfuscated. Even if the count and content of ballot images match the numbers and counts reported by the database, there's no method to validate those ballot images due to missing SHA files, which are intended to provide such validation. Unauthorized creation of new tabulation and adjudication databases occurred in the 2021 Grand Junction Municipal Election along with the selected copying of batch and ballot records from the original databases and the new ones. This places all 8,540 initial ballots counted into a state where they cannot be validated. Some because it's possible that their vote information was changed and unverifiable, there was not, and some because the chain of evidence has been intentionally obfuscated. Let me see which one this thing is. Three. As we have found evidence that thousands 
of ballot records have had their validity placed in serious question. None of the election results from the 2020 general 2021 Grand Junction municipal elections in Mesa County could be considered trustworthy. If Mesa County has pre preserved the respective paper ballots as they were required to do by law, and those ballots were forensically authenticated with, with, with confirmed chain of custody from eligible electors to sworn county election officials, then a hand count of paper ballots might support a verifiable, trustworthy conclusion about the county level results of those two elections. In other words, just do a hand recount. Because the unauthorized methods used to alter batch and ballot level information described above are available within the DVS EMS server, this system cannot be considered reliable for any for use in any election. An investigation involving all physical and cyber evidence, including a source code audit of the exact verifiable version of, of all DVS supplied executable and library files is necessary. In other words, you need to sort of go through and see that there was no algorithms that were put in there to identify the exact software methods used to produce the manipulation and determine other potential unauthorized actions that the code is able to cause or ena enable. And finally, Dominion Voting System database structure stores actual vote information in only one table in aggregate form. So alterations made to vote counts for candidates in just that table create a single point of attack or failure for the entire vote reporting process. Interesting. So I guess I could have it shipped off into two different directions. And that would be another way to ensure that everything is more accurate, that the accuracy is maintained. All right. Well, that was a mouthful. 30 seconds in chat GPT4, and you can ask questions about this. I'm not, I don't rely on chat GPT4. Expert witness to show in Georgia court back in January how to change votes with physical access to the machine. Reboot into safe mode, and you can edit the voting info files in plain text. I'm sure there are an infinite number of ways for it to for our tabulations to be attacked. The question is how we, you know, the steps taken to remedy. And the purpose of identifying these flaws is by helping to identify these flaws, we can hopefully start to remedy it, assuming that you have persons who are interested in remedying it. And when you have jackasses like Chris Ray, who are so desperate to say that everything was fine, everything was fine, everything was fine. It's like the plane is in a nosedive and it, and you know it's and and the it's like a stewardess standing in front saying no it's perfect everything's totally fine and you're everyone's like buckling up and like going down like this and everything's fine relax everything's totally fine this is totally normal just a little turbulence it's standard it's not doing anything and you're like you and you're like bitch we're in a nosedive here <laughs> i got they're dropping the oxygen masks on me what the hell are you talking about everything's fine and there's Chris Ray in front of the airplane wearing his stupid little mini skirt saying everything's fine, everything's fine. It's like, no, that just tells me you're you're the wrong person to be where you are. You're the wrong person. You know your stupid mini skirt, you got hairy legs. All right. Let me see what else I had for you. I was thinking about sharing with you a couple of other things. Not this. I did that already. Mm, don't want to cover this. Let me see something. Give me a quick. Give me a second. All right. I'm going to do something for you all on locals. And I know you're going to be mad at me. I know you're going to be mad at me. I know you're going to be mad. I know you have every right to be mad at me. But I need to explain why I have to do this on locals. Okay? The reason I got to do this on locals 
is A, I haven't done anything for the local folk yet this week. And I always want to make sure I do at least one thing for them. B, to appreciate this story, to appreciate this story I want to share with you, not related to election fraud, to appreciate this story, you sort of need to see a 12-minute video of John Stewart. And I know John Stewart. I know Johnny well. And I know his handlers well. And they're cucks, a bunch of loser beta, beta cucks. And if I show even 14 seconds of stupid jackass John Stewart material, this stream will get hit with a copyright strike. Now, this stream is already traversing perilous waters by being dedicated to talking about election fraud. I can handle the going yellow. I can handle that. But being blocked, and then I'm going to have to edit it out afterwards and then go through that hassle at 3 o'clock in the morning today is not something I'm in the mood to do. So what I'm going to do is this. First, I'm going to create a locals link. And then I'm going to share it with you. And I'm going to go over and wrap this sucker up and talk with you about this John Stewart hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. And his claims about Trump and his and fraud and him denouncing Trump's quote unquote fraud that got him hit with a $454 million fine. But you sort of need to watch the video and then and then after I watch the video with you to learn what I learned earlier today about Jon Stewart himself, the self-indulgent schmuck. So I'm going to need to take a moment here, set up a live stream, and share it that way. So I'm going to do this live stream. I'm going to set this to go live in 10 minutes. I'll share links with you. Let's pause the after show. After show. John Stewart. Hypocrite. I'm dated 328 because where I am, it is March 28th. 328. After show, John Stewart. Hypocrite. Live stream description. Let's we'll say, get ready to laugh. Next, we'll set this up. It's now my local time, 1225. I'm going to set this up for 1240. And All right, there you go. Let me put it in the chat here. I'll put it here in both chats because that goes out to both of you. And I'll pin it on I'm gonna pin this for you on YouTube, which I can't do that anywhere else. I can't do that on Rumble. Sorry, ghetto folk, that's not my fault. I want to see it here. I want to see my thing here. There it is. That's going to be it. That's going to be in 14 minutes is when that's starting. So wait, I pinned that, right? I did pin that. I was going to put it in the description for those of you who are joining late. So this way you can find it. There we go. Look what's after. And 
this is my you can I hope you'll all join me over there so we can all say F you John Stewart. Because that's an important thing to do on a regular basis to say F you John Stewart. While you're here, before you go over there, you can subscribe, like, share, subscribe, do all that, all that good stuff, all that good stuff. All right. I wasn't planning on doing Locals After Show. I wasn't planning on doing it. But I was like, no, you need to appreciate what a complete jackass he is to, 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 to actually get the full laugh out of him. So do what the cartoon tells you. Hit like, hit subscribe. He only hit subscribe. He's only got one hand to reach up with, you know, like the other, the other hand wouldn't reach. So, yeah. Um, what, let me see what I second. There was one other thing I was thinking about sharing with you. I was thinking about sharing this with you. This is a good thing to close out with. On Obamacare. One of the things that the left still stays married to, one of the things they still stay married to is this notion that Obamacare was this, is this phenomenal success. It's another form of gaslighting. Phenomenal success. Oh, Obamacare. Oh, it's so wonderful. The Affordable Care Act has saved millions of Americans from not having insurance. Such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Such a wonderful, oh my gosh. What an amazing thing. Well, apparently, not everyone thinks that. Here's one man's story. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. That was the every one of those schmucks at the Democratic debate in 2020 were like, yes, I need to give health care to every jackass who walks across our border. Every one of them. Look at all those hands up there. Look at every one of their hands. Idiots. It's not enough to give free health care to Americans. No, we got to give it to anyone in the world. Anyone in the world who manages to set foot on, set foot on our shores. That was the precise moment that I knew I was leaving the Democratic Party. Because I was a two-time bone cancer survivor. I voted for Obama-Biden based on Obamacare. And when it was implemented in 2010, I ended up losing my insurance. I went from an insurance plan that was $185 a month with a $1,000 deductible to that policy being canceled because it no longer met the requirements of Obamacare. And I was left with the cheapest option being $1,200 a month, $6,000 deductible. So he went from $185 a month, $1,000 deductible, to six times as high. More than six times, $1,200 a month with a $6,000 deductible. $185 a month, $1,000 deductible, to $1,200 a month, $6,000 deductible. I went 10 years without insurance and I was penalized each year because I could no longer afford insurance. And in 2016, every single Democrat candidate up on that debate stage raised their hand and said they would give illegals free health care. While me as a two time bone cancer survivor lost mine, didn't have insurance for 10 years and I was supposed to get CT scans, chest x-rays, and all these other tests done every six months to ensure my cancer didn't come. God bless Obamacare. And they wanted to give illegals free health care. That was the exact moment I was no longer a Democrat. So there you go. Interesting story, huh? Interesting story. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought so too. Anyway. Worcestershire says, I'm still creasing over John's hypocrisy call out. Revenge serve best cold. And I got a thumbnail. <laughs> Johnny Reb created a thumbnail for me in there. That's over in locals at goodlogic.locals.com. Goodlogic.locals.com. You can just jump on over there. Jump on over there. Is it in the description yet? That's what you're saying to me. Joe, I don't watch the chat. Is in the description. I need to see it in the description. Otherwise, it's not a thing. Why is that not working? Retry. What happened here? 
what the heck is going on here with YouTube? It didn't go in there. Let's do it again. John Stewart, hypocrite. Locals after party. All right, now it's there. Let me make sure it's over on the Rumble description also. Let me, let me fix that up also. Fix that up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Copy. Okay, it's now in the description. If you refresh on, on Rumble, you'll have it there too. All right, you all got it there. I got to go set up a new StreamYard link to send over there. So I will be there in six and a half minutes. I plan on starting on time. This is going to be funny. You're going to have a good time with it. And Jon Stewart, you can kiss my ass. Go, go complain to locals that I'm stealing your stupid, gay-ass content. You freaking cuck. You freaking losers. Can't stand these copyright cucks. Can't stand them. Can't stand them. Even if I sit there stopping it every 30 seconds, every 15 seconds, mocking his idiocy and his stupidity and his gaslighting of his own audience, I'll still get hit with the strike. And then I got a, a copyright strike, not like a strike to my channel, but I'm still gonna I'm, st I'm still gonna be blocked. It's not no one's gonna be able to see this video. It's gonna be a nightmare. It's gonna, and I'm gonna sit here when I'm gonna argue about it. So no, to hell with him, to hell with Daily Show, to hell with all those jackasses. I'm going over and making fair use out of it on locals where I don't have to worry about YouTube kissing the hem of the, of the John Stewart's world saying, oh yeah, we're going to shut down anybody and give you all the money of anyone who actually shows 10 seconds of your idiotic, stupid, lying, gaslighting material that's so ha 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 funny. So yeah. Join me over on Locals, goodlogic.locals.com. I'm going to see you there in five minutes. Till then, take care. Good night. Godspeed. Oh, FYI, 2001. But blue states don't follow it. Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you, John. Thank you for sharing that. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything over here because that would be that would make me feel bad. If I... Nope, we're good. I'm going to Locals. See you there. Ciao.